Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge. And we're going to knock out some more zombies from the Resident Evil 2 board game. These are some more of the alternate sculpts. But I figured what we would do is actually make them look a little bit more desaturated, go for a little bit more of a old rotting kind of look, rather than the, you know, bright, freshly dead kind of zombies that uh, we've been doing everything thus far. Uh, so why don't we just uh, get on to it right here. So starting off, I did the similar thing that we've done with all of our other zombies, which is a base layer of ash gray, and then I also touched up the bases with some matte black. I would just knock that out of the way before you move on to anything else. And I think what we'll start with is we'll just start getting all of their clothes out of the way. I'm going to take out some uniform gray, because it's basically just an even darker gray color than the ash gray that we used, so it'll be a little bit distinct from the skin tone that we've got. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the, you know, half-naked zombies right here, and I'm just going to get his underwear real quick. Nothing major. There we go, nothing too major. It just gives the subtle impression that the actual underwear that he's wearing is different from his skin tone that we've got. So we've got that for one of them. And then I'm going to take one of the ones with a shirt here, and I'm going to go ahead and paint one of their shirts as well. I figured we would do the sort of thing that we were doing with some of the zombies earlier on where we're kind of avoiding a little bit of uniformity and so we can have a little bit of color variation in that way. Uh, luckily there, there are only two of each of these sculpts so you know you don't need to do anything too dramatically different for each one but we'll just we'll just make them all stand out a little bit differently so you can tell them apart when you're looking at them on on the uh, game board. All right, and there we go, so now we've just got one of them with a nice gray shirt right there, nice dark gray. And then we're going to use this color for one more thing, and that's that we're just going to touch up all of the uh, shoes that the clothed ones are wearing right now. Should just be a little, little tiny thing, but just, you know, touch up the shoes real quick. All right, and there's one with a nice pair of gray shoes there. And there we go, now we've got that nice uniform gray on all of the shoes. So I'm going to rinse my brush off. Now, you may have noticed that when I went over the underwear, I only went over one of them with that uniform gray, and the other one I left unpainted. And with the clothed zombies, I put one with uniform gray and I left the other one unpainted. So now we'll take the unpainted ones of those. So we'll just take these bad boys right here. And now we're going to apply some army green. I think that it's a nice desaturated green color that will sort of help give a little bit of a color variety while still maintaining that sort of old rotten look. Let's start with the uh, the t-shirt here first. All right, and there we go. That just gets a nice uh, kind of an army green color for the shirt there. And then we're just going to take the other one here and we're going to do the same thing with that pair of underwear that he's wearing. All right, and there we go. That just gives us a, a nice sort of color variety for all four of them there while giving a little bit of uniformity. A little bit of uniformity, a little bit of variety, and that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. That's good. Okay. Next up, I'm going to knock out the pants on the zombies with some clothes there, and I think that some leather brown will be a nice sort of, you know, slacks pants kind of color, whatever. I'll even use a slightly larger brush because I'm not as concerned about the uh, the details on the pants here. And I would say don't concern yourself about the belts that they're wearing because you can kind of see that they're wearing, you know, a belt and they've got some belt loops and, and the little belt buckle there. I honestly wouldn't worry about it. I would just go over all of it with this brown color, and I think that when we apply our shade later, that'll give us the detail work that we need. After all, we're just doing we're just doing quick and easy paint jobs here. We want to do stuff that's accessible by anybody, regardless of any painting abilities. We want this to be nice and simple and straightforward, and just a good way to give you some some nice table ready miniatures. Another thing that I'm doing here that you might notice is that I'm avoiding all of the holes on the pants. You know, I'm just sort of leaving those open 
like that. You can do that if you want to, or you can just kind of go over all of the holes. I don't think it really matters too much. It's just whatever you're comfortable with doing. If you want to get a little bit of practice just with uh, doing some more minute detail work, you know, nothing too crazy, but something that's easily attainable, then I would say go for it. And if you feel like you messed it up and you feel like, oh, it doesn't look right, then just go over it all normally and I think that it'll be just fine. Do whatever you are comfortable with doing. All right, there we go. So there's one pair of pants down. Let's just get the other one real quick. And there we go. That just gets their pants nice and covered. So that looks pretty good. Next up, we'll just use a slightly lighter shade of brown. So what I'll do is I'll use some monster brown right here and we'll just use that to coat their hair really quickly. We go a little bit something like that you don't need anything too detailed just enough to get some coverage on there just like that and there we go so now we've got some hair on them and that's pretty much it for all of the major well kind of for a lot of the major stuff next thing that we're going to do though is we are going to move on to the actual you know thing that makes them look a little bit more zombified now what we have done before to give them the nice rotting look that we have here what we're going to do is we're actually going to just refrain from using any of the glistening blood that we've used for i'm pounding on my desk um uh, that we've used for the previous miniatures now, in order to make up for that, what we're going to use is a nice dark red color to emphasize the wounds. And we want it to be nice and dark because that will give it the impression that they're sort of old, rotting wounds. And so we'll use some Crusted Sore, which is just one of my favorite names for a paint color I've ever seen. <laughs> And what we're going to do is we're just going to very kind of like slowly and carefully just look for, i tell you what, since they're still wet, why don't we move on to the, to the half-naked zombies right here. Uh, we're just going to look for things that are very obvious wounds, and we're just going to lightly apply this to all of those wounds. So like this one right here, the whole right side of the chest I think is supposed to be kind of ripped open a little bit. So we'll just go over that with this crusted sore color. You might also need to use a few layers. One thing that I've noticed about this crusted sore color is that it seems very thin and uh, it seems like it needs multiple coats in order for it to get the coloration that you really want. So that's just something to be aware of. All right, and he's got like sort of his shoulder there is kind of chewed up a little bit. All right, a little bit something like that. And that just sort of gives the impression that he's got a bunch of wounds all over his body there. Again, I would say that the, the big point on, on his chest, on either side of his chest, on his left shoulder and coming down to his bicep a little bit, I think he's got a little bit of a hole on the right side of his head here. Obviously, there's the big chunk that's missing on his right leg and a little bit on his left leg, both of his kneecaps. It might be a little bit tricky to get into some of the areas on the right leg just because of the hand that's in the way. So just be aware of that a little bit. And then on the back, you've got some over his uh, thigh. And, and you know, now that I'm looking at it too, it looks like there might be a little bit of a hole kind of on his uh, left elbow there. And then yeah, the same thing with like the right calf, you know, each calf has a little bit of a big, big hole chewed in each side of it. So we're just gonna do that for both of them. There we go, just a little bit something like that. And that gives the general impression that they're both nice and nice and eaten through. They're both nice and zombified there. Come on, focus, there we go. Yeah, and then that'll call, all sort of come together when we apply our shade to it too. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other one here, although I don't think that he is as messed up, except for uh, the clothed zombies, they've got like their, their jaw is like ripped open basically. Like their whole face has just sort of been ripped off. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and paint basically the entirety of their face and their neck right below their face with this crusted sore color. All right. And then for these ones, yeah, like I said, you want to get their face nice and prominently there because it's like their face is just completely torn off. That's essentially what that looks like. And then just make sure to get like their chest their arms, you know, it's, that's the thing. Just just sort of look around uh, the whole miniature and just sort of eyeball it. Look for stuff that looks like they might be big 
carves in their in their flesh or big wounds or anything like that and just go over it and don't worry about having to you know paint every single little tiny scar and scratch don't worry about the details because the shade will fill it all in later so we're just going to do that same thing with the other one and then after i get the you know this this uh, across on all of them i'm going to let them completely dry before we apply the shade and then that'll be that'll be pretty much it And now those guys are nice and dried enough, I would say. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring it all home with a strong tone. And that should just sort of tie it all together. And I'm hoping that with the, the sort of color palette that we've used so far, and using this shade and not using any, any of the glistening blood, I think that it's all going to look a little bit more sort of rotten and somber, a little, little bit more kind of decaying, uh, that kind of thing. So we'll just use a big fat no-name brush right here, nothing special. And you're just going to apply this, you know, across the entirety of each of the miniatures. All right, there we go. That ties it all together, I think. So we're going to do that for all of them. Let's do that. So I did that for the one with the with clothes. Let's do it for the, the half-naked one here. There we go. That's looking pretty gnarly there. All right, great. So we're just going to do that to all of them, and then we're going to let them dry. And then after I let them completely dry, I'm going to apply a layer of matte varnish. I'm going to say that that's optional. Obviously, if you've seen the previous videos on this channel, then you'll, uh, you'll know that that's a thing that I do for all of the miniatures, but it's also just purely an optional thing. It doesn't come with the, uh, the Army Painter Mega Paint set, so yeah, you don't have to worry about it if you don't have it. But it's still a thing that I'm going to do. So I'm going to apply this, let it completely dry, apply the matte varnish, and then that'll be it. And that will about do it with all of those rotten zombies right there. Yeah, if you just use sort of the desaturated colors, you know, you can get sort of this darker, more sort of grim, dark, gray scale kind of coloration to them by not using any of the glistening blood. You could also dry brush a little bit of, uh, you know, like dragon red or something like that on there if you wanted to uh, get some red on the wounds and that kind of thing, but that's sort of up to you. If you want, you can kind of leave it that sort of dark purplish color a little bit, and that just kind of makes it look a little bit more like old, rotting, gross, brown, discolored flesh, that kind of thing. So that's it. If you liked the video, go ahead and throw it a like. If you want to see the rest of the alternate sculpts for the Resident Evil 2 board game, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Maybe I'll knock out some of the uh, alternate sculpts for the survivors in the next one. I'm not really sure. I'm just kind of playing this by ear and uh, making this up as I go, pretty much. But I won't take up any more of your time, so thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.